Hey, and welcome to class. My name is Flo. Thank you so much for practicing with me today. In this video, I will guide you through a longer vinyasa flow sequence. So if you're new to yoga, this class is not for you. It's going to be on the stronger side. Of course, you can still give it a try and attempt this practice, but I think you will get more out of it if you first check out our beginner yoga program called Embark that will give you a nice introduction into yoga and then you can deepen your practice from there and come back to this class anytime. There's a lot of requests for longer classes. I'm reading all your comments and your messages, so thank you so much for reaching out. We are producing longer classes just like this one, but they will be exclusively on Patreon. So on YouTube, we will only be posting a few classes, maybe a handful of classes, but there will be a lot more on Patreon where you find 60 minute, 75 minute, 90 minute classes, maybe even longer classes in the future. There's also a full handstand program. So it's a program designed to guide you from no handstand, no handstand experience to a free standing handstand for one minute in the middle of the room. It's a really, it's a really detailed handstand program that will show you everything you really need to know for your handstand journey. Now if you want music for your class today, you can check out our playlist on Spotify. It's all there for free if you have a Spotify account. There's already a ton of playlists that go well with this style of practice. We just introduced the yoga playlist of the month. So it's going to be a playlist that will be updated every single month. And before we update it, we store the current playlist into a static playlist and then update the playlist. So you really only have to follow that one playlist and it will be updated every single month. The link to the Spotify account is in the description below. So you can go check that out, start some music and enjoy those beats for this practice today. All you need is your mat. If you have a block or a book, grab that too. And let's begin in child's pose. Come onto the knees, untuck the toes, bring the feet together, knees wide apart. Walk the hands forward, arrive in child's pose. Let the hips melt down towards the ground, towards the heels. Rest your forehead down to the mat and breathe. Take a couple breaths here in and out through the nose. Let's start to set up our breath for this class. Exhale all the air out. Take a deep breath in, fill the lungs all the way up. Hold your breath at the top for five, four, three, two, and one. Slowly exhale all the air out. Take one more deep breath in, fill the lungs all the way up. Hold your breath at the top for seven, six, five, Four, three, two, and one. Exhale all the air out. Last one, deep breath in. Hold your breath at the top for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and one. Exhale all the air out. Very good. Set up Ujjayi breath, that breath that works well for your practice. Set your intention for this practice today. Make this practice your own. And let this intention extend into your actions. On and off the mat. Blink your eyes open, come into a tabletop, come onto all fours. Untuck your toes. Send the hips back towards the heels, quick wrist warm up as always. Keep the arms straight, move the shoulders forward. Feel the weight in the fingertips. Send the hips back, rock forward and back five more times. Keep the breath going nice and slow. Very 
Very good. Now the fingertips are pointing to the sides. Lean over to the right side. Let the right palm lift up. Keep the arms straight. Over to the left side. To the right. To the left. To the right. To the left. Keep it going. Feel free to do this wrist warm up longer or even before class if this is not enough for you. There's also a separate video on wrist health and with wrist warm ups, showing your wrist warm ups on this channel. Very good. Now come onto the backs of your hands, the fingertips are pointing towards the knees. Stay on the toes, send the hips back. Breathe into the wrists. Slow it down. Sit on the heels, shake out the hands. Very good. And find your way into a plank pose. Step the feet back, extend the feet back, plank pose. Push the ground away firm into your inner hands. Use your fingertips to grip into the ground. Engage your glutes. Draw the inner thighs together and up. Breathe nice and slow. Bring those feet together. Come onto the knife edge of the right foot, side plank on the right hand. Reach your left arm up. Press into your, left, press into your right palm. Reach your left fingertips up towards the ceiling. Keep pressing into the inside part of your hand. Use your fingertips to grip into the mat. With your left arm, you're now reaching underneath the body, underneath the right armpit, towards the right side. Keep the right shoulder over the right wrist. Keep reaching, keep reaching, but you stay on the knife edge of the right foot. Keep reaching until you start to feel your core on the right side, your obliques. Keep the breath going. For three. For two. And for one. Plank pose, both hands down. Both feet back down, very good. Bring those feet together. Side plank on the left side. Reach your right arm up. Press into the inside part of your left hand. Engage your glutes. Lift your left hip slightly up higher. Now with your right hand you reach underneath the left armpit to the left side. But stay on the knife edge of your left foot. Keep reaching, keep pressing into your left hand. Push the ground away, keep reaching, feel your left obliques, activate, fire up for three, for two, and for one. Plank pose. Very good. Keep pushing the ground away, clean it up. Make plank pose your resting pose for this practice today. Slow the breath down, breathe more quietly and slower. As things get stronger throughout this class, and we just started, it's easy to breathe fast, the heart rate goes up. The real control shows in how slow, how quietly can you breathe. Bring those feet together, let's do one more each side. Come to the knife edge of the right foot. Reach your left arm up, side plank on the right. Reach your left arm underneath the right armpit, Towards the right, keep pressing into your right hand. Now reach as far as you can until you feel like you can't reach further. Then you come onto the toes, and now you create all the space to reach even more. Keep pressing into your right palm. Hold it there, reach more. You want to touch your left shoulder towards the right arm. For three, for two, and for one. Plank pose. Beautiful. Other side, side plank on the left, reach your right arm up. Reach that right arm underneath the left armpit, towards the left. Reach, 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 until you cannot reach any further. Then you come onto the toes, unlock that space, keep reaching to the left. Keep pressing into your left palm. Move the right shoulder towards the left arm. Keep reaching, keep pressing, hold for three, two, and one. Plank pose. Beautiful job, shift forward, bend your arms, 
come all the way down. Untuck the toes, uh, sphinx pose, come onto the forearms, push the ground away with the forearms, engage your glutes, look straight ahead. If you want to go deeper, straighten your arm seal pose. Keep the glutes engaged, relax the shoulders down. And release. Come into a downward facing dog. Walk your dog. Pedal one heel down, then the other. Arrive. Firm into the inner hands. And perhaps your downward dog is more with bent knees. But like I said, if you're new to this practice, I recommend checking out the other videos, the Embark program, to get more in-depth explanations of downward dog and all the poses. So find that shape that works well for you. If you're super tight in your hamstrings, of course, keep those knees bent. Press into the palms, move the chest towards the thighs, breathe. Establish that quiet rhythm of your breath. Very good. Lift your heels, bend your knees. Now a step or float the feet outside the hands. For a squat, reach the arms forward. This nice and wide, active squat. Very good. From here, pull the belly in, reach the arms forward. Send the hips slightly back and down. Let's squat all the way down, come onto your back. For both poses, extend the legs forward, reach your arms forward. Press the lower back into the ground, engage your glutes. Squeeze the thighs together. Hold it there. Now from here, we're all going to meet in a Chaturanga. So you, wanna run, you might want to rock back, forward, feet down, hands down. Chaturanga is where we meet. Straighten the arms, plank posts. Bring the feet together, big toes together, side plank on the right. Reach your left arm up. Press into your right palm. Reach your left arm underneath the right armpit. As far as you can, press into your right hand. Hold it there for five, four, three, two. Stay on the knife edge of the right foot. One, plank pose. Other side, feet together, side plank on the left. Right arm up. Press into your left hand, engage your glutes. Reach that right arm underneath the left armpit. Reach, reach, reach. Press into your left palm. Stay on the knife edge of the left foot. For five, th four, three, two, and one. Plank pose. Beautiful job. Shift forward, come high onto the toes. Bend your arms, chaturanga. Lower all the way down. Untuck the toes, cobra pose, press into your palms, lift the chest up. Broaden the collarbones, relax your shoulders back and down away from the ears. Keep the elbows in, last three, two, and one. Release down, let's meet in downward dog. Send the hips up and back. Connect to the breath. Connect to the body. Slow it down. Arrive. We will again meet in a yogi squat with the feet outside the hands, but it's active variation where the hips are lifted high. 
to work on the thighs. You can step or float your way there. You decide. Reach your arms forward. Bend your knees, hand the hips back and down. Draw the navel to the spine, pull the belly in. And breathe, relax your shoulders down. Bend your knees a little more. Squat all the way down, come into a boat pose. Extend the legs forward, arms forward, or arms up and over your head. You decide. Draw the navel in, find this hollow body shape. Squeeze the legs together, point the toes. Breathe. For five, four, three, two, and one. Chaturanga is where we meet. Plank pose, straighten your arms. Chaturanga again, bend your arms, upward dog, untuck the toes, push the ground away, look straight ahead. Engage your glutes. Bring the feet wider apart if this is not good for your lower back. Engage your glutes more. Externally rotate the arms, wrap the triceps in. Pull the shoulders back and down. Broaden the collarbones. For three, keep breathing. Two, and one. Downward dog, send the hips up and back. Beautiful job. Take a deep breath in through the nose. Open mouth, let it all go. Two more just like that. Inhale. Open mouth, exhale. One more. Inhale. Open mouth, let it go. Seal your lips. Breathe in and out through the nose. Perhaps close your eyes, especially if you're holding poses longer, it's really about connecting to the breath, connecting to what is, the pause between the inhale, the exhale, the stillness within. So all that we're doing, something strong or challenging for the body, we constantly want to connect to that place of ease and peace within. And it's really more a practice for the mind than the body to practice remaining calm, peaceful, centered, Although there's something very challenging going on, which is the pose, the shape we put our body in. Very good. Let's bring the feet between the hands so you can step, float, or handstand your way there. You decide. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, forward fold and down. Hang out your forebed, grab opposite elbows. Rock side to side if you want to. Let the head hang heavy. Take a deep breath in, lift up halfway, hands down to the ground. Exhale, forward fold. Bend your knees, roll up to standing, take a deep breath in, the arms reach up, the palms touch, chair pose as you exhale, bend your knees. There's two options here, you can either keep the feet together and the knees together, or the feet and the knees apart in this more traditional chair pose that we're in right now, before we did more like a active squat variation, this one is 
chair pose, Utkatasana. Pull the belly in. Take one more deep breath in. Exhale, forward fold. Deep breath in to lengthen up halfway. Exhale, step the right foot back. Pyramid pose. Make sure both heels are on the ground. So that perhaps may, means for your body to shorten your stance. Straighten both legs. Keep the hands on blocks or fingertips on the ground. Deep breath in to lengthen. Exhale to fold. Draw the left hip more back and up as you fold the chest and your head down over your left shin and over the left leg. If you feel comfortable here, you can walk your hands over to the left, outside the left foot, perhaps over to the right. But keep pulling the left hip back. Let's frame the left foot again, rebend the left knee, shift forward, warrior three, prep the right leg floats up. The right toes are pointing down, straighten both legs. Reach through the spine forward, from the hips up towards the head, you're reaching forward, just like a halfway lift. At the same time, from the hips down to the right leg, you're reaching back through the right heel. We're here for about five more breaths. If you feel like coming upside down and you have enough of being on the legs already, the option to come upside down. And if you are working on your handstand or you would like to learn handstand, then check out our Patreon account. There's a full handstand program that will teach you everything you need to know. Three more breaths. If you're upside down, slowly come back down. Left foot to the ground. Good, let's all meet here. Now, from this warrior three prep, you tap the right knee to the outside of the left calf for Shiva squat. So you bend the right leg, point the right toes, tap the knee, bend both knees, come back up, warrior three prep, and tap. Come back up three more, maybe lift your hands up off the ground. Last two. And last one. Very good, rise up for tree pose. Bring the right foot inside the left thigh. Hands to the heart. Relax your shoulders back and down. Push your hips forward by engaging your glutes. At the same time, you pull the right knee back. Look straight ahead. Look at one point that's not moving on the wall or on the ground. In yoga we call this our drishti, our point of focus. But it doesn't need to be anything external. It could also be you focusing on your third eye between the eyebrows. This could also be your drishti or anything else within or outside of the body. Very good. Slowly step the right foot back. Hands down, plank pose. Shift forward, come high onto the toes. Bend your arms, chaturanga. Straighten the arms, plank. Chaturanga again, bend your arms. Inhale to up dog. Exhale to downward facing dog. Beautiful job. Bring the forearms down to the ground for dolphin pose. Try to bring both forearms down to the ground at the same time. Very good. Ideally, the forearms are parallel to another. But if you have tight shoulders, the elbows come more out and the hands are more in. Perfectly fine. Push the chest towards the thighs. Start to lift your right leg up and back for this three-legged dolphin. Firm into the inner hands. Move the chest towards the left thigh. Draw the navel to the spine. Breathe nice and slow. 
especially breathe more quietly, more control. Look forward between the hands, shift forward, one-legged chaturanga. Straighten the arms, one-legged plank, right knee to the chest, right knee to the right elbow, or the right armpit, lower down to the right wrist. Keep pushing the ground away, over to the left wrist, and up to the left armpit, knee to the chest, right foot between the hands. Pyramid pose, straighten both legs, Shorten the stance if you need to. Deep breath in to lengthen. Exhale to fold. Pull the right hip up and back. Relax into this fold and breathe. Walk your hands over to the right side. Pull the right hip more back. Breathe into the back side of your right thigh, your right leg, your right hamstring, also your right calf. Walk the hands to the left, inside the right foot. Very good. Frame the right foot again. Rebend the right knee. Shift forward. Warrior three prep. The left leg floats up, straighten out through both legs. It doesn't matter how high you can lift the left leg up, but focus on straightening them and then lift your left leg as high up as possible. It doesn't matter if it's straight to the ground. Pull the belly in, keep reaching forward through the spine, nice and long, back through the left heel. Rotate your left hip more down so it's on the same height as the right hip. Stay here for about five breaths. Or come upside down if you want to, up into a handstand. We're here for three more breaths. Slowly make your way back down. Right foot comes to the ground. Warrior three prep, very good. We're doing five of those Shiva squats. Tap the left knee outside the right calf. Come back up. Tap. Come back up, maybe without using your hands. Lower down and tap. Come back up, last two, nice and slow. Keep the control. Last one. Beautiful, rise up for tree pose. Left foot goes inside the right thigh, hands to the heart. Connect to the balance of the body in this pose, in this shape. It helps to look at one point with your eyes. Breathe nice and slow. Push your hips forward. Gently pull the left knee back to open up the left hip. Controlled, slow breaths in and out through the nose. To release, step the left foot down next to the right. Chair pose, bend your knees, reach your arms up. Lift your heels up as well, so we're only on the toes. Draw the navel in. Stay there, breathe. Reach out through the arms. Keep that natural curve in your spine. Last deep breath in. Exhale, squat all the way down. Come into boat pose. Reach both arms up and over your head. Squeeze the thighs together. Point the toes. Press that lower back into the ground. Keep the breath going. Stay here or start to rock forward and back for five times, five rocks. Really good for your handstand, for stability in the body. Last two, last one, and that's already it. I know, I wish we could do more. Reach forward, let's come into Chaturanga. 
feet down, chaturanga, plank pose, straighten the arms, one more chaturanga, shift forward first, bend your arms, elbows in, up dog, to downward dog, very good, release your forearms down to the ground, both at the same time, very good, look forward between the thumbs, Shift forward, chaturanga, plank, straighten the arms, chaturanga, dolphin. That's one, let's do five more. Shift forward, plank, chaturanga, dolphin. Forward, plank, chaturanga, dolphin. Last three, chaturanga, plank, chaturanga, Dolphin, last two, chaturanga, push it up, bend your arms, dolphin. Last one, forward, plank, chaturanga, dolphin. Beautiful job. Straighten both arms for down dog. Slow the breath down. Maybe your heart rate went up. Slow it back down. Breathe, breathe, breathe. So important. Very good. Bring the feet between the hands. Step float or handstand, you decide. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, forward fold. Bend your knees, roll up to standing. The arms reach, palms touch. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale to lift up halfway. Exhale, left, step the left foot back. Low lunge. Send the hips forward and down. Stay on your left toes. Reach your arms up. Draw the navel in. Send the hips forward and down. Now interlace your fingers for Kali Mudra. So you, the index fingers are still pointing out. Cross the thumbs, cross all the other fingers, interlace them, pull the hands back, open the chest up. Engage your left glute. Send the hips forward and down. Offer the heart, the chest, forward and up. Let's stay for three more breaths. And release, very good. Let's release the hands down to the side. Stay on the left toes. Slowly send the hips back, shift the hip, shift the weight back over your left knee. And we start to lift that right foot up off the ground. Straighten your right leg. Use your hands to balance. Look down at one point on the ground. I got a lot of those mobility and balance drills in the Yoga for Jiu-Jitsu playlist. So even if you don't do Jiu-Jitsu, check it out. Really fun stuff like this. Set the foot back down. Low lunge. Come onto the left toes if you're not already. Crescent lunge. Reach your arms up, rise up. Very good. We want to stay really low with the left knee above the ground to get a really nice quad and bend into the right leg. Look inside the right knee. Make sure you can see the right big toe. Move the left heel more forward over the left toes. Draw the navel in. Reach out through the spine, uh, through the arms. Through the spine too. Reach your left arm forward, right arm behind you. Open twist. Very good. Now hook that left elbow outside the right thigh. Connect your palms, straighten your left leg for crescent twist. Keep the spine nice and long. Pull the belly in. Straighten your left leg. Gently press into the palms. If you want to go deeper here, you can bring your left hand 
outside the right foot and reach your right arm up. We're here for three, for two, for one. Let's all shift forward. The left leg floats up, left hand down, revolved half moon. The right arm is reaching up. Straighten out through both legs. Draw the navel in. Let's switch the hands for half moon. Right hand down, left arm up. And if you would like to lift the right hand up off the ground, lift the entire upper body up higher. Let's stay for three more breaths. Step the left foot back, warrior two. Find your warrior two stance here. Bend your right leg, reach your right arm forward. Left arm behind you, still looking inside the right knee. You want to see that big toe there. Reach out through the arms. Look over your right middle finger or close your eyes. Enjoy the breath. Enjoy this pose. If it's getting very challenging and hard for the thighs, for the shoulders, focus back on one breath in and the breath out. It's easy to give up. Like I said, we're training the mind, willpower to stay calm, relaxed, mindful, paying attention to the subtle, to the little things in this pose. While at the same time, this is so challenging. Spider lunge to the left, bend your left knees straight in the right. Could be a deep skandhasana, side squat, or also the high variation you decide. Move to the front of the mat, warrior three. The left leg floats up, now reach both arms forward, up and over your head. Straighten out through both legs, especially the left leg. Lower the left hip down, reach both arms forward for three, for two, for one. Step the left foot back, hands down, plank pose. Beautiful. Finally, we are in a resting pose. Time to hang out, give the legs a break. Dripping sweat over here on this side of the internet. I'm sure you are too at home. Great job. Keep pushing the ground away. Firm into the inner hands. And breathe. Shift forward, come high into the toes. Bend your arms, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, plank. Exhale, down dog. Very good. Release your forearms down. Dolphin pose. Lift your left arm, uh, your left leg up. Three-legged dolphin. Press your chest towards the right thigh. Hold it there. Look forward between the hands. 
shift forward, one-legged chaturanga, one-legged plank, knee to nose, left knee to the left armpit, push the ground away, slide the knee down to the left wrist, over to the right wrist, up to the right armpit, back to the chest, left foot between the hands, low lunge, right knee down, come onto the right toes, send the hips forward and down, reach your arms up. Keep your right glutes, right glute engaged as you shift the hips forward, pull the left heel back, draw the navel in, find more length from the spine, the base of your spine up towards the fingertips, keep pulling the belly in. Very good, release the hands down, slowly lean back, straighten your left leg, balance on the right knee, the right toes. And know that your knees get stronger the more you practice, so if this is uncomfortable, they usually get stronger over time, the more you are on the knees. Balance here, have some fun, look at one point on the ground, if you fall, doesn't matter, try again. Keep breathing. Step the left foot back down. Come onto the right toes if you're not already. Crescent and lunge, lift the right knee above the ground. Stay low to the ground. Nice deep squat into the left leg. Look inside the left knee. You want to see the big toe there. So that the thigh is tracking the same direction as the foot. Keeps the knee safe also activates the glute on the left side. Reach your right arm forward, the left arm back, open crescent twist. Lean back slightly, really use the core for the activation, feel the obliques to create that rotation in the upper body. Reach out to the arms, beautiful job. Find the crescent twist, hook that right elbow or the arm outside the left thigh, hands to the heart, straighten your right leg, pull the belly in, on the inhale lengthen forward through the spine, on your exhale twist to the left. If you prefer to go deeper, bring the right hand down, outside the left foot, reach your left arm up. Pull the belly in, move with the breath. Keep the right leg straight. Very good, slowly release. Shift forward, revolved half moon. Right hand down, left arm up. I think this is one of my favorite poses. Just feels so nice in the body, but in the beginning it felt so weird and awkward. But over time I really started to really love this, this pose. Breathe. Slow, most important. And then switch hands, half moon, left hand down, right arm up. If you want to lift that left hand up off the ground, lift your entire upper body up, but keep the arms open. Reach back through the right heel to really pull that right hip over the left, and step the right foot back, warrior two, left arm, uh, left, uh, left arm forward, right arm back, look inside the left knee, you want to see the big toe here, just like crescent lunge, press into the outer edge of the right foot, reach out through the arms, look over your left middle finger or close your eyes. Breathe nice and slow. And it's often these poses where you have to hold for a long time that really activate the mind, the thoughts to create and come up and go into future and past. It's easy to stay busy and focused as there is a lot going on, as you're moving fast and going through all these shapes, 
But as soon as you slow down, will it be a relaxing, stretching pose or something strong? The mind sometimes tries to take over. And that's for you the chance to, again, breathe in and breathe out. Come back to what's going on right now. To this beautiful warrior two shape you can do with your beautiful body. To that breath. Spider lunge to the right, bend your right knee straight in the left. Move to the front of the mat for warrior three. Your right leg floats up. Reach both arms forward. Lower the right hip more down. When you find full activation in the back body, the back side of your right leg, your back, your arms. For three, for two, and for one. Step the right foot forward, chair pose. Reach both arms up. Draw the navel in. Lift your heels up. Send the hips back and down more. Reach your arms higher up. Squat all the way down. Set the hips down, both posts. Extend the legs forward. Arms up and over your head. And now we're here again. Let's do 10 of the rocking, or just stay here. One, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Very good. Reach your hands forward. Let's come into a chaturanga. Rock forward. Lift the hips up. Step or float back. Plank pose. Chaturanga again. Up dog. Inhale. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, plank. Exhale, down dog. Release the forearms down, dolphin pose. Shift forward, chaturanga, plank, chaturanga, dolphin. Four more, plank, chaturanga, dolphin. Last three, forward chaturanga, up to plank, chaturanga, dolphin. Last two. Last one. Chaturanga. Dolphin. Beautiful job. Let's meet here. Nice and slow, deep breaths in and out through the nose. Now from dolphin, let's float the feet forward between the hands. Otherwise, if that's not accessible, come into down dog, walk or float the feet forward. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, forward fold. Hang out here, interlace your hands behind the back. Move the arms and hands up and over your head. Straighten your legs a bit more. Internally rotate the thighs. You can keep the feet almost together, but make sure you have a space between the heels. The big toes are okay to touch. A little break for the shoulders after all this awesome shoulder work. Release your hands down. Bend your knees, roll up to standing. Take a deep breath in, the arms reach up. Exhale, hands to the heart. Beautiful, extend your arms out to the sides. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lift up halfway. On your exhale, hands down, your vinyasa on your own, whatever it is. Make it with the breath, controlled. Downward dog is where we eventually meet.
Release those forearms down again, dolphin pose. Lift your right leg up. Three-legged dolphin, shift forward. One-legged chaturanga. One-legged plank. Knee to nose. Very good. Step that right foot between the hands. Now use your left hand to grab the outer edge of the right foot. Come on to the left heel, rotate the left heel to the right. Press into your right palm, extend the right leg away from you, if accessible, otherwise just keep it bent. Keep pressing into the right hand. Lift your right hip high up. Stay here, breathe. Let's meet in starfish, right foot down, left arm up. Let's lower the hips all the way down to the ground, the toes lift up. Very good, bring those feet together, the soles of the feet together. Grab your feet and fold forward and down. So you're now turning a little bit away from your screen, but it's all good. Listen more, listen closely. Grab the feet, fold forward and down. Here for several breaths. This is a strong class. And now it's time to slow it down. Now it's time to let go of that control and move more into a space of surrendering, letting go instead of controlling. Because it's same, same as in life. There's things that are in your control, that are in your reach. So if you wish change and if you want change, then there's things you can directly influence and change and take action. This is the control. And there's things that you would like to change, but they're not in your reach, they're not in your control. So you need to accept them and surrender. And this practice is teaching us this balance of control and surrendering. Going both ways and then ultimately we develop that sense for balance for when we are right in the middle, right in between control and surrender. Control and letting go. Focus on the breath coming in and out through the nose. And like I said before, sometimes these poses can trigger more than the ones where you're moving fast, you're moving through. Those shapes where you stay can bring up a lot. Use the breath as your guide. When the mind gets busy, starts to wander deeply in through the nose and exhale through the nose. And you repeat. Let's do five more of those. Slowly release. Push yourself back up. Take your time. We stayed in this pose for quite a bit. From here we're coming back into a starfish, so you start to extend the legs out as wide as possible. Make sure the left foot, the left heel is on the mat. Your right hand goes behind you, which is towards your screen next to your right hip. Reach your left hand up. Starfish pose. Very good, release your left hand down, plank pose, 
Shift forward, come high onto the toes, bend your arms, Chaturanga. Inhale to up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Release your forearms down again, dolphin posts. Lift your left leg up. Look forward between the hands. Shift forward, one-legged chaturanga. One-legged plank. Knee to nose, hold. Step the foot between the hands. With your right hand, grab the outer edge of the left foot. Firm your left palm down. Rotate your right heel to the left, down to the ground. Extend your left leg away from you. Pick that foot up. And then extend the leg away from you as much as possible. Doesn't matter if it's straight. Keep shifting your left hip forward towards the left foot. Keep pressing into the inside part of your left hand. And that's release for starfish. Lower the hips down, keep the heels on the ground, keep the legs straight, just lower down. Keep the legs wide apart. And now we're moving into a seated straddle forward fold. So keep those legs wide apart, keep them straight, bring them wide apart if you want to. Now I'm facing away from you, but I'm sure you know what I mean. Walk the hands more forward and fold forward and down. It's oftentimes more about listening to what's going on instead of looking. Because you can also totally rely on just looking how it looks and what I'm doing here. Instead of listening to the cues and focusing more on your own body. It is ultimately what I want, that you find this connection to your body. What feels good, what doesn't, what do you need to add to this practice? What do, you, what do you want to remove? And based on those choices you make on your mat, and learning how to make those choices on the mat, hopefully, eventually, you also make those choices in your life. Where you do the things you like, you love, that feel good, and you stop doing the things that you don't want and that maybe someone else wants you to do, but you don't want to. And so from this practice, you hopefully learn this skill of listening to what you want, making those choices, but it all needs to result in an action. Otherwise, just knowing what's good for you, but then actually not putting it into action is completely useless. All knowledge is useless without action. Five more breaths here. As long as you feel a sensation in your body, in your lower back, your inner thighs, maybe someone, some, somewhere else, like a good stretching sensation, it's all good. Stay there, keep exploring that sensation, keep doing the practice, the body will open up over time and as long as you feel that sensation, you can keep going and keep working on it. If you feel any sharp pain or any really sharp, painful sensation, then it's time to back off a little. No need to force it. That's not how it works. It's a practice of patience and in this particular case about surrendering. Walk the hands back. Coming back to a starfish, your left hand goes next to your left hip. Keep the legs wide apart and straight. Reach your right arm up. Lift up for starfish. 
Release the right hand down. Plank pose. Nice and slow. Now your vinyasa on your own if you feel like taking one, otherwise downward dog. It's all meet in downward dog, very good. We will all meet seated, the option to step float or handstand through, so you find your way into a seat, whatever works for you. Are we good? Set the feet down, bring the feet as wide apart as your hips or wider. Your hands go behind you, fingertips pointing towards you. Just slide the hips forward towards the heels. Bend your arms, send the elbows back. Slowly release. Come onto your back. Now cross your right leg over the left thigh. Lift those feet up off the ground. You are now reaching with your hands towards the heels. If you can't grab or reach the heels, no problem. You just grab the, the shins. Keep your feet flexed. That's very important as we come into a hip opener here. Reclined full cow face. You keep the feet flexed. The toes are pointing towards the knees. You relax the head down and you gently pull on the shins so you feel a sensation in both outer hips. If you feel more open, you grab the heels, but you still keep the feet flexed. Maybe the, the hips lift up off the ground. Stay there. Just pull enough so that you feel a sensation in the outer hips. There should not be any sensation in your knees. If there is, then back off. No need, there's no need and it's absolutely dangerous to explore that sensation in the knee and if you keep going you might really hurt yourself, which is not something you want. So take your time back off if you need to, go deeper if you feel like it and you know what you're doing. Come back to the breath in through the nose and out through the nose, most important. Very good, release down, keep the legs as they are. Now scoot the hips over to the left side. And then release the legs over to the right side, all the way down to the ground. You can rest your right arm on top of your legs, extend your left arm away from you. Close your eyes if you want to. Use your right hand, bring your legs back to center. Switch sides, so right foot down, the left leg comes over the left thigh. We're coming into this reclined full cow face. Lift the feet up off the ground, bring the knees closer to the chest, grab either the shins or the heels, but keep your feet flexed so that the toes are pointing towards the knees. Breathe into the sensation in your body. Based on the function of this pose, this should be somewhere in the outer hips, left outer hip and outer right hip, also your piriformis. But ultimately you will feel this where you need it the most. And you add more attention and focus to what you're currently doing by focusing on the breath in and out of the nose and sending that breath into the parts of your body where you feel the sensation. And by doing that, you send more 
life energy into that part. So that blockages could, re could be removed, maybe some healing can happen there. And release down the right foot. Keep the left leg as it is. Scoot the hips over to the right side. Bring the legs over to the left all the way down. Your right arm away from you. It's a little bit of a different variation of a twist today where we focus more on internal rotation in the right hip and the right thigh. Three nice and slow breaths. Use your left hand, bring your legs back to center. Let's find happy baby, something symmetrical to even out. Grab behind the thighs or grab the outside edges of your feet. Move the knees closer to the armpits. Relax, breathe. Extend your right leg away from you if you want to. Switch sides. If there's any other one or two last final poses you want to do, feel free to take them now. We all have our favorites that we want to do in the end of class to feel complete. Let's all hug the knees into the chest, exhale all the air out. Take a deep breath in through the nose, fill the lungs all the way up and hold your breath at the top. For seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Open mouth, exhale, let it all go. Extend the legs forward to the corners of the mat. Let the feet naturally fall open. Bring the arms out to the sides. Palms are facing upwards. Stay here and relax the body. From the fingertips to the toe tips. Sometimes we hold some tension in the fingers and the toes. So check in with those body parts, let the tension go. Relax from the crown of your head all the way down, your chest, your belly, your hips, your thighs, your knees, your shins your ankles, your heels. Make this final pause of practice just as important as everything else we have done so far. Often not easy to slow down. The world we live in today is the more the better. If you do more, it's better. You gotta work hard, you gotta grind. That's not really an environment for most of us where it's okay to slow down, it's okay to take a break, where it's okay to do less, to recharge, to refill your own cup before you continue to share with others. It's almost as we have to constantly remind ourselves to slow down. It's okay to do less. It's okay to relax. Thank you.
feel the air coming in and out through the nose. Take a couple more breaths here. Start to let those breaths be deeper. Feel the belly lift, the chest lift, the lungs expand. Feel your own body. Beautiful body laying here on the ground. as you are right now in this moment you are perfect beautiful body and beautiful mind beautiful heart through this practice we're bringing all of those things in sync we're reminding ourselves of that connection always connected, it always has been, but sometimes we forget about it. So the practice of yoga is a reminder that you are whole, you're full, you're complete, as you are right now. to move the body with your eyes closed find your way into a comfortable seated position however you get there is great take your time you will all meet in a seated position keep your eyes closed just feel your way there you can sit cross-legged or in hero's pose Keep your eyes closed, sit nice and tall. Place your hands on the knees or on the thighs or in your lap. Now in a traditional yoga practice and the origin of yoga asana really is just a preparation and a measure to keep the body healthy so that you can sit in meditation for a longer period of time. But unfortunately nowadays most classes are very movement based, asana driven, asana driven only. I want to remind you that the most important practice is using the breath, controlling the breath, and connecting to that stillness within, slowing down All the wisdom and all the knowledge will come to you the more you sit in meditation. I'll sit in meditation today with you. I can make sure you're comfortable. The spine is nice and long.
Feel your own body weight rooting down through the hips or through the knees and the feet. Lengthen out through the spine so that the head is over the shoulders, the shoulders are over the hips, so that gravity can go straight through you and you can sit here pretty effortless. Next, start to feel the breath coming in through the nose and out through the nose. Without controlling the breath, let the breath flow in and out. to meditation, the mind starts to wander really fast and it's distracting you from focusing on the breath. So what you can do is counting as you breathe. That means on an inhale you count one. On an exhale, you count one. Inhale for two. Exhale two. Inhale three. Exhale three. Keep going. Count on your own until you reach 10. And then you start back with one. Keep counting from one to 10 and back to one. Each full breath cycle of an inhale and exhale is a count of one. One round or increase by one. comfortable with this you can also stop counting and focus only on the inhale exhale through the nose how the air is passing by the tip of your nose into the nostrils into the body and then back out fully focus on that sensation of the air coming in and the air leaving the body in one particular spot along that path that the air, the breath is taking for an inhale and an exhale. You can always come back to counting anytime. If you do get distracted by a thought, let it come. Let it be let it go. It's okay that it came, it's normal. Allow it to be there. Bring all your awareness back to the breath or to counting and the thought will disappear again. I highly recommend doing this practice every day for 10-15 minutes. Especially if you are one of the ones that have a very strong practice. And you're always looking for more. Go 
or something stronger. To deepen your practice is through meditation. Not gonna happen through necessarily making the asana practice stronger or harder or longer. There's a benefit to that, of course. But the real depth of the practice that will extend into your day-to-day -day life is through meditation. Sitting still every day to breathe, to observe, and to fully be. sitting here focusing on the breath let's continue together for just two more minutes Slowly bring your hands to the heart. Take a couple deep breaths. Thank yourself for showing up, for doing the practice. Thank yourself for staying until the very end. I am very proud of you for doing the full class, for doing the practice, and for doing your part to elevate the vibration of the planet. And I'm very proud of you for investing in yourself and by doing that, investing into everything and everyone around you. Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu. May all beings be happy and free. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Thank you very much with love and gratitude. Namaste.